In this coding exercise, we are asked to build a user, but this is going to be a little bit different type of a class than normal. So we have two different types of ways that the user should be able to be created. One is by using this block syntax where we can say user.new and then do, which means that we have the ability to pass a block. And inside of this block, we can use a block variable that represents our user and set the name and the email. Then we also need the ability to set the user using the traditional class instantiation syntax, which is where we create the user. Then we set the user's name and email. Let's first take care of this basic user first, since that is kind of the standard way of doing it. I'm gonna create a user class here, and because we need the ability to set these names and then also get the names, that tells me that we're going to need a adder accessor for a name and an email. Now, if I hit save, I should be able to already use this first syntax. So I'm gonna say u equals user.new, u.name equals Jordan, u.email equals test at test.com. And now I should just be able to see what is inside of this user object. So if I run this code, you can see that this has effectively done what we needed. And if I run the test, so if I run RSpec and January 23rd here, this should give me one failure and one pass, which it does. So what this tells me is in switching back, we have the ability to already take care of the first version of this code. So our first test, or I should say the second test, our most basic test is passing, but we still need the ability to use this block syntax. Now this block syntax can be incredibly handy when it comes to building objects, working with classes, and so this is a, definitely a very important skill to know. So how can we do this? I'm going to come here, get rid of this test data, and come back at the top. Now, if you are familiar with Ruby, then you should probably have a good idea of the initialize method. Now, usually when we have initialize and we need to pass values, we would do something like name and then email. And now you have these items, these attributes that can be added in the initialization process. But by leveraging the block syntax, we can actually call a yield method right here, pass in self, and this is going to allow us to do the same thing. So now if I come down here, let me, and actually let me uh, come and just grab these values here. I'm just gonna copy these and come up and paste them. And so what this is going to allow us to do is to use this block syntax. So now I should be able to use this syntax, run it, and there we go. You can see right here that we have a user object created with the name of Jordan and an email of test test, and we're able to use the block syntax. Now, you may think we're done, but we're not quite done, and I'll show you why over here. If I run our RSpec tests again, you're gonna see a failure. So what is the problem here? The test that failed is that the block user allows a user to be created without default values. So it's actually our second test that's failing right here. So why exactly is this failing? Well, the reason is because right here on line seven, when we called yield self, what this means is that we are requiring the block syntax to be used. And so what happens is in that second situation, then the user class gets instantiated and it's waiting for a block. And there are times when you need this. There are times where you want to create a class or a method that needs a block and you don't want to allow it to be optional. But there are also many times 
where you simply want to make it as an option and not a requirement. So the way we can accomplish this is by saying yield self if block given. Block given is a very handy method and what it's going to allow us to do is to say I want you to use this process, this yield initialize process, but only in this situation, only when we have created our user using the block syntax. Now if I type clear, run this again, you can see we have two examples and zero failures. So now we have the ability to not only create a user using a traditional syntax, but also using the block syntax, and they can be created independently where one isn't required by the other one because of our cool little block given method right here. So that is how you can use blocks in Ruby.